Okay, so we will look at pressure measuring devices. Last week we spoke about pressure and pressure and pressure, and we said that uh, pressure is the ratio of the of the force to the area of that uh, uh, column. So today we shall be looking at the different types of pressure measuring devices because. If you recall, I was saying that fluid mechanics covers liquids and gases, all right? And for us to be able to get a good measurement, we have to use some pressure measuring devices. We have so many types of pressure measuring devices. For example, we have uh, what I call, we have the piezometer. We have the piezometer, okay? We have the um, we have the uh, barometer. We have what you call the bordon bordon gauge. We have the um, manometers. So so these are some types of pressure measuring devices that we use in fluid mechanics. All right so in today's uh in today's class we shall be looking at how these devices operate and also we'll look at the equations for each of these devices and we shall solve some questions at least one question as it relates to each of these uh pressure measuring devices so I will start with piezometer. So the first pressure measuring devices I am talking about is piezometer. Now what you are seeing on your screen here is an example of piezometer in operation. Now listen very attentively. Now what you are seeing right here is the piezometry tube. And this is the vessel or the pipe from which we want to get a pressure reading. Now, before you start doing this, you must ensure that the fluid inside this vessel must be a liquid. We do not use a gas for, um, for a piezometer. We use what? A liquid. Now, that liquid must have or must have a pressure that is that is greater than the atmospheric pressure. The first thing is this. The liquid that we use in uh, a piezometer must have a pressure that is what? That is greater than the atmospheric what? pressure. Okay? Now, how does piezometer work? Now, when we insert the tube into the pipe okay it it raises the pressure or sorry it raises the fluid the liquid in the pipe to this level and therefore we can take a measurement of the height of that of that liquid and we use a formula which we use to measure uh, in this case we use the formula we use um, P, which is the pressure, is equal to the density times G times H. And please remember that this H is the height of the column, is the height at which the, the liquid rises above the pipe. Okay? And please, we must also note that the piezometer is used for measuring pressure gauge or like i can say uh, it is used to measure pressure gauge that's a very important point that you must note as it relates to piezometer it is used to measure pressure gauge that's one 
Also, in some textbook, we can also refer to piezometer as pressure tube. So, I am saying that piezometer is also referred to as pressure tube. Alright, so these are some uh, important concepts of the piezometer. So we use this formula to calculate for uh, pressures or pressures that relate to piezometer. We have some disadvantages of using piezometer. Okay, we have at least two disadvantages of using pyrometer. Number one, it must be a liquid. Okay, it must be used for a liquid. That means that the fluid in the vessel must be a liquid. All right. Number two, the uh, the pressure of the liquid must be greater than the atmospheric pressure. Let me explain that. The pressure of the liquid must be greater than the atmospheric pressure. Now, if the pressure of the liquid is lesser or is less than the atmospheric pressure, it means that air will be sucked into the system. Okay? Air will be sucked into the system. So for us to use piezometer, we must use a liquid that has what? Greater pressure than the atmospheric water pressure. So those are the two disadvantages of using a uh, piezometer. Otherwise, it is a very simple and accurate pressure measuring device. But just for those two uh, disadvantages. Here is a question for a piezometer. So it says a piezometer is used to measure the pressure of oil mass density of what 640 kilogram per meter cube in a pipeline okay if the oil rises to a height of 1.4 above the center of the pipe calculates the gauge pressure at that point and please note that we use piezometer to calculate gauge pressure I repeat that we use piezometer to calculate gauge pressure please don't forget that so the first thing i will do here i will write out my given data i'm giving density okay i'm giving density density as what 640 640 kilogram per meter cube all right the height is given as 1.4 the height is given as 1.4 okay so I'm, i am asked to calculate the gauge pressure which is pi and i know that for a piezometer to find the pressure the formula is pi equal to density times gravity times height now in our last class i was saying that for gravity we are using g as 9.81 9.81 meters per second square all right so what next i will log in the data for my density is 640 so it's 640 times my gravity is 9.81 times my height is 1.4 our answer is what 8789.76 pascal that is the gauge pressure in the piezometer. If you don't mind, you can decide to convert to kilopascal. That becomes um, 8.8 kilopascal. All right, so that is our final answer. So let's look at the barometer now. 
Now, if you look at the uh, diagram, you will see that there is a difference between barometer and the piezometer. Let me explain that. Now, the uh, piezometer has an open top, okay? But a barometer has a closed top and the vessel is open. But for a piezometer, the vessel is what is closed, okay? But for a barometer, the vessel is what is open. Now, how do this work? Now, for a, for a barometer, the liquid inside the vessel, all right, is less than the what? Atmospheric pressure. I repeat that. For a barometer, the liquid in the vessel or in the container is less than the atmospheric pressure. Let me explain that. Now, the reason why you see the fluid going up the tube is because the atmospheric pressure is acting on the vessel. All right? So, as the atmospheric pressure, look at this. As the atmospheric pressure acts on the vessel, okay, it, 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 it pushes the, uh, the, the gas up the tube which gives us the height of that what uh fluid inside the what the vessel so what i'm saying is this a barometer is used for measuring atmospheric pressure it is used for measuring atmospheric pressure while the piezometer is for measuring the gauge pressure it's used for measuring atmospheric pressure so that is uh for a for a barometer and please note that the the fluid we use in a barometer is mercury in fact we have um we have two types of barometer all right we have the uh mercury barometer and we have what we call the aneroid barometer we have the mercury barometer and uh, we have the aneroid barometer so let me explain that we have the mercury barometer and the aneroid barometer now let me explain now mercury barometer use what uses uses what uh uses liquid it uses liquid for its uh, uh use why the aneroid barometer has no liquid all right what it uses is a is like a small capsule all right that that is pressed oh okay like a needle inside there like a needle that that can, that can read the pressure of that uh vessel so for a mercury barometer we can read it using the height but for an aneroid barometer it is read by looking at the what looking at the at the hmi at the screen of the uh aneroid barometer it has an it, it, a needle like a clock that that moves as the pressure is acting on the device all right so i'm saying that we have two types of barometer we have the mercury barometer and the aneroid barometer now for us to calculate the pressure in um, in a barometer the formula is this is p atmosphere equal to density times gravity times height now please don't forget the reason why I use P atmosphere is because a uh, barometer is used for measuring atmospheric pressure. So that's the reason I use P atmosphere equal to uh, density times gravity times height. So that is the formula we use for finding 
the pressure in a barometer all right now before i show us a question i want us to remember what we did in our last class all right that um that we can also change this equation okay for example we are told that um pressure also pressure in, is also equal to the specific weight of the substance times height if you recall in our last class i was saying that specific weight is equal to density times what g i hope you all have this in your last class notes so i can take off this all right and put what and put this now omega m is called the specific weight of the substance in this case is mercury because what we, you have inside this container is mercury so this is called the specific weight of the substance so is the is the specific weight of the substance in this case we have what mercury okay we have what mercury now let me explain further in our last class we were told that specific gravity which is s which is s is equal to what the specific weight of a substance all right over the specific weights of water i hope everyone can remember this equation from last class so therefore we can transpose all right so i can say therefore that specific weights of a substance is equal to the specific gravity times the specific weight of water so these are formulas we can use to solve questions as it relates to fluids and uh, pressure measuring device. So we can either use this formula or we can use this formula, okay, or this formula, Be depending on the question that we are given. What is the atmospheric pressure? In Newton per meter squared if the level of mercury in a barometer is 760 millimeters above the level of the mercury in the ball given the specific gravity of mercury is 13.6 and the weight of water is 9.81 times 10 to the times 10 Newton per meter cube please i want us to note that the specific weight of water is constant okay it is 9.81 in some books it is a um, thousand okay so it is 9.81 times 10 to the what power 3 9.81 times 10 to the what power 3 all right times 10 to the power 3 all right we have to find the what the atmospheric pressure as always i will write out my given data so i have my p atmosphere okay it's not given to me unknown okay the height of the of the fluid is 760 so the height of the fluid is 760 millimeters guys remember i will convert this to meters okay convert to meters that will give me um 0 0.76 meters okay now i'm giving the specific gravity which is s i'm giving s as 13.6 okay 13.6 i'm giving the the weight of water which is omega h2o is given as 
times 10 to the power 3. All right. So, how do I solve this question? I was told that, that uh, the pressure in the atmosphere for a biometer is what? Is P atmosphere equal to what? Um, specific weight of the substance times what? Times height. Okay? Now, also, I was told that the specific weight of the mercury is what? Is the gravity of mercury times the specific weight of water times the height. So therefore, we can say that, we can log in the data. I have the gravity is 13.6, so 13.6 times the weight of water, which is 9.81 times 10 to the 3 times the height, which is uh, 0 0.76. So when you multiply this together, you should get uh, 1 zero one three nine six point one six pascal okay that's our answer if you don't mind you can convert to kilopascal that means you move your decimal point three times which is one two three so it becomes what it becomes one zero one point four point four kilopascal uh, so that's our final word answer uh the bottom gauge uses no fluid okay no fluid as you can see right here it has two end okay one end is fixed this end here this end here is fixed okay so this end or this end is where we connect to the uh fluid whose pressure is to be measured okay now the other end here look at this look at this here this other end here is free to move okay through mechanical linkage and uh gear sector to a to a pointer as you can see here the needle is the pointer so as uh the pressure or as the pressure um increases above the surrounding okay the tube the tube cross section becomes what becomes circular and that causes the tube to deflect at this end i repeat that as the fluid pressure increases above the surroundings okay the tube cross section which is this, which is this point becomes circular and causes the tube to deflect at the second word end that is how we can measure pressure using the bottom gauge okay now the bottom gauge is using what what you call as pressure sensing elements i repeat that it's what, what you call what a pressure what sensing element which is this which is this is the pressure is the pressure sensing element so when the pressure above the surrounding okay uh, reacts with the uh, bottom gauge it what it becomes what circular and causes the what the tube to, to what to deflect all right that is how the pointer in this device moves okay so the pressure sensing element is that mechanism by which the pointer moves and therefore we can we can get the reading of the gauge pressure in that fluid that is the concept of what a bottom gauge also i want to add that uh, the bottom uh pressure gauge is used to measure pressure differences that are more than 1.2 bars it is used to measure 
pressure differences that are more than 1.2 bars it's used to measure pressure differences that are more than 1.2 bars that is the concept of the bottom gauge